What is going on guys, it is Bucky and welcome to your second lesson in how to build a Java stock market analyzer program. How awesome does that sound? So now that we already have the data, we can begin building the program to analyze it. And before I get started, I just want to tell you guys one little thing I did already. In my folder, if you go to my C and my stocks folder, I got that new DAO, which we have before, and this has all the data in it from um, today to the beginning of time pretty much. I also took tr the most recent 20 rows out of this and made it into a smaller file called DAO. And this is pretty much just to uh, test. Like I knew there was 20 rows in here and we're gonna have a formula called find rows. And in order to verify that, I just needed to make a smaller file. And like when I make smaller programs just to test, um, I'm like, all right, is this one greater than this one? Then I just have something small to look at and I don't have to go searching through my huge file. So if you wanna get a little piece of your huge data file and put it in another smaller file um, so you can actually visually see that you're working with and it makes a little more sense you can do that but when we run this program full-fledged and we're gonna be analyzing all of this data right here because the more data you analyze the more accurate it's gonna be so again all of my data is in the new DAO and my smaller 20 rows of data is in the DAO so we're going to be testing with this DAO, but remember, when you run the program for real, that's the new DAO. And you can see the size difference right here. Quite the difference. So now what I did to set up my program is I built my main method right here in the th something called stockmarket.java. I named it stock market. You can name it anything you want. Um, you can name it like stock program if you want, but um, we're going to be using this to run all of the other classes pretty much. In for now I just want you to build one other class and I'm gonna name this read files now what this class is gonna do is pretty much take that file that CSV file that we just downloaded and it's pretty much gonna read it and verify that it's a file and do stuff to it so name yours read files because that's the basics of what we're gonna be doing now you need to import two things that I already did. Just import everything from Java IO, which is input output, and this is so you can like input output files. And also string tokenizer. And what string token well I'll tell you guys what that does later. It pretty much takes all the commas out of your file in essence. So now let's get programming. The first thing that we need to do is store that file in a variable. So from the file class, name your variable something. I'm gonna name my file because it's easy. And set it equal to new file. And set as a parameter, it takes the location of wherever your file is. And it takes it as a string. So here's what you need to do. I put mine in the C drive. So I'm gonna put C colon. And instead of one backslash, remember, because this is a string, we need to escape a backslash. So anytime you have a new directory, put two backslashes. Normally it would be one, but one is an escape character. So if we put two, it views it as one backslash. And then I have a folder called stocks, and you should put it in the same one as me. And then I have my file called um, dao.csv. Remember, this is uh, my smaller file that I'm going to use for testing purposes. So now this file is stored in this variable called file. So now anytime I want to use a file, I just use the keyword or variable name file instead of having to write this whole thing. How awesome is that? So we're going to be building two other variables that we're going to use later. Actually, a variable and an array. The first, well, the second method we're going to build is to find how many rows or in that file so put int row and set equal to zero for now and this is pretty much going to store the number of rows in that file and we got to find the number of rows to figure out how big we need to make our array and you'll see why later on and the second thing we have to create is an array to store all the data now we actually just can't read the file like it is right now we need to change it into an array because we can do a lot more stuff with an array it has a bunch of built-in methods that we can to a CSV file so that's why we need to we're gonna eventually be changing that um, file we downloaded into an array so since it has rows and columns let's go ahead and make it a string 
and just have it say items. So now we're going to have a two dimensional array called items eventually. And remember, since, um, well, I'll show you guys right here. Um, if you go to computer, C, stocks, I know you guys can't see this, but there we go. Remember, we can't just make this an integer array or a float array because this first element right here, that's the date. That's not an integer or float. All of these, we could probably have float, double, um, but this one, since it's not, pretty much since these are all aren't the same type, we're going to put them all as a string and then convert them to whatever type they need to be. So let's go ahead and just make a, a two-dimensional array in one we'll name of items. And this is going to store all of the elements um, from that file I just showed you. So now let's just go ahead and make a quick little method. And what this method is going to do is pretty much check if this file is a file. And this pretty much verifies that we have the correct path pretty much. So go ahead and make it public boolean since it's going to return a true if it's file and false if it's not and name it something like check um, is file and it doesn't take any parameters and now let's just go ahead and put something like um, let's just go ahead and return since we want a return value file what we're going to be testing and there's built-in method that's called is file in this is file method it checks this right here which is in essence this and it says alright if it, this file is a file then I'm gonna return true if it isn't a file I'm gonna return false and let's go ahead and use this right now so remember this is all in the class read files and this method is called check is file so let's go ahead and put read files r you can name it whatever you want I just name my r equals new read files empty parameters and now we can use all that stuff in this read files class and we only have one method in here so let's go ahead and use that um let's just go ahead and system out system out print line and let's go ahead and call that method r dot uh, what do we put check is file right there so what this is pretty much going to do is it's going to print out true or false if this file is a file we're gonna get the return value of true and remember this is file is a built-in method in Java so we didn't we don't have to create this if it if this is not a file it's gonna return false so let's go ahead and run it and we should get true right now and look at this we get true printed out on our screen and just to show you guys how this works if we have um, a file called like DAO 43 we never created this file. It doesn't exist on our computer. So this is not a file. So if we go ahead and try to run this again, it's going to go false. And that way, we can only run this program if it is a file. In the next tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use this program and kind of check if it is a file. And if it is a file, run the program. Just a little nice little safety measure. But for now, change your directory back to where your file is. And um, in the next tutorial, we're going to be getting the row number of the file in here. So for now, just for, or excuse me, remember to build your check is file method to check if the file is a file. And again, like I said, in the next tutorial, we're going to be getting the row number of that CSV file. So thank you guys for watching. I know we're off to a great start. This program is going to be awesome, by the way. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.